All right, we'll go ahead and get started. Uh, thank you everyone for coming. Uh, welcome to the Elrig Philadelphia Science Webinar. My name is Lorena Kalal and I'm at GlaxoSmithKline in Collegeville, Pennsylvania. I am your WebEx host today. Just a couple of comments on the WebEx. First, we are recording this WebEx for future viewing. Secondly, participants are muted. For the questions at the end, we will use the chat function. You will select chat and then send your question to all panelists. One of the panelists will read the questions to the speaker. With that, I would like to hand this over to our Elrig Philadelphia chapter chair. Over to you, Rodney. Good morning. Next slide, please. Hi, I'm Dr. Rodney Bednar, the chair of Elrig Philadelphia. Uh, LRIG is the Laboratory Research and Innovation Group, and uh, our website is LRIG.org. And on it, you can find listing of future meetings that we have scheduled. There's one for the third week in February the 17th and one for the first week in March. And uh, in September on the 30th, so about eight months from now, we hope to have our annual um, vendor show in King of Prussia, Pennsylvania, for those who live in the greater Philadelphia area. Uh, the purpose of our virtual scientific meetings are to allow scientists to share their research and innovations with the global LRIG community. We want to provide an opportunity for scientists to uh, share their research. Um, many times it may be difficult for young scientists to travel to scientific meetings, and this is a forum where they should feel free to uh, present their work. Uh, all events are free and open to all. If you have a proposal or you'd like to organize a, a meeting for a talk, please just email us at talks.phl at elrig.org. I'd like to make a special thank you to our our committee on the virtual scientific meetings, Lorena, Ron, and Sharon. And today, Lorena is our host. Uh, Ron will be uh, asking the questions and we'll introduce our speaker, which is Sharon today. So on to Ron. Thank you, Rodney. Today, I'd like to welcome Sharon Matamoros. Uh, she has a background in analytical chemistry and is an analytical automation specialist in the small molecule high throughput automation group at the GSK Collegeville, Pennsylvania site. As a member of this team uh, since 2018, she's focused on applying automation to accelerate early phase drug development. Today, she's going to be giving an overview uh, with the Andrew Alliance liquid handler robot that enables automated pipetting, flexible program settings, and simple drag and drop protocol designs. Her talk will highlight the automation development challenges and solutions to fully automate a platform analytical method to determine excipient content in a monoclonal antibody biopharmaceutical drug product. The title of her presentation today is Automated Platform Analytical Method to determine excipient content in biopharmaceutical drug product using the Andrew Alliance liquid handler robot. Please post your questions at the chat again, and we'll read them at the end of her presentation. I turn it over to Sharon. Hi, everybody. Thank you for joining uh, this presentation. I really appreciate the time that you're taking during your lunch. And, and thank you, uh, Ron, for the introduction to as Ron mentioned, my talk is Automated Platform Analytical Method to Determine Excipient Content in Biopharmaceutical Drug Products Using Android Alliance Liquid Handler Robot. First, first I would like to introduce uh, my, my team and what we do. And what we do is that we support automation across the portfolio. We uh, have a growing impact to our business since 2016. Uh, we follow three GSK values, which are innovation, performance, and trust. And the way that we um, follow this innovation is by supporting more than 270 uh, projects, more than 1,400 work packages. And when it comes to performance, we have performed more than 80,000 experiments. Also, we get trust every year. And as so far, we have uh, 
197 business partners. So these numbers, they increase year to year and, and you know, we're glad that we definitely can support um, different uh, teams. Now, when it comes to the pharmaceutical development investment in automation, we have a world-class facilities. So global facilities include 1,500 square feet, and this covers Upper Providence, US, which is where I am located, Stevenage in UK. Also, we have scientific staff, and we um, are talking about 10 full-time scientists, about two students, one in UK, one in US, and one contractor. And we're looking at capital assets of more than $5 million investment in best class uh, robotic platforms. Also, when it comes to the resource safe, we can do experiments that they are less than 1 milligram API and also less than 1 milliliter solving experiments. And that represents a six fold time savings. I want to share with you some of these automation capabilities that we have, and this is in our big division, product development and supply. So when it comes to solid dispensing, and I'm going to um, get my laser pointer here. Uh, we have Metro Toledo, QX96, QV5, and QV30. We also have a can spit. So all of this is for solid dispensing. Now, liquid handling, we have a Felix is located in UK and here at UP, we have a Hamilton Nimbus and we have five Andrew robots. Also, we have multi platform, um, uh, multi functional platforms robots. And right now we have five free slate CN3. And one of these uh, free slate CN3 has an optimization sampling reactor, OSR. And that will help us uh, with chemical reactions. And also from this five, we also have two biofarm uh, platforms, which uh, help us to support um, that biofarm. So for example, for my application, I use uh, the biofarm robot to test viscosity. In the analytical hub, we're looking at high throughput HPLC and UHPLC. We have in situ imaging station, we also have high throughput uh, UVs, bis and fluorescence. We had um, high throughput Raman microscope and also high throughput HRPD. We also have a mini LC. I also want to share with you the automation work packages that we offer to our partners. And this is like our current menu and to the right here um, I we have the 2019 impact for the different uh, groups so most of our work is related to bio relevant media and pH solubility we also do excipient effects and formulation development and the list goes on I'm not going to read all of that uh, but you know, groups that we impact is pharmaceutical development, chemistry, process engineering, analytic and, and material science. Today, my application is going to be related to biopharmaceutical analytical methods. So let me introduce um, the Andrew robot. So the manufacturer for the Andrew robot is Andrew Alliance. So it uses calibrated pipettes. Uh, these blocks that you see here, they're called dominoes and they're allowed for variety of sample vials. Also, it has built-in cameras. We're going to see this in, in more detail in the next slide. And these built-in cameras confirms the location of the dominoes and also the pipette setting. The protocol design is simple drag and drop. And you can uh, specify the piperine technique. So you can definitely decide your preparing speeds. If you want to prewear your uh, tip, uh, you can do air caution top or bottom. You can also do solution mixing via aspirations and dispenses. And you can also replace that tip every time or you can re uh, reuse the tip. So looking at the robot in more detail, so we can see here the different parts. I just going to concentrate in one I think is very important. So we have the pipette racks, maximum of five pipettes. Also, we have this robotic arm. And here we will see this uh, hand camera. 
And here we will have this twister camera. So the robot basically is going to come and grab the iPad. It's going to lock it here in that twister, cam uh, twister. And the twister camera is going to set up the volume. You don't have to set up the volume for the pipette, the robot will, will do it. And also this hand camera here is going to be able to locate the dominoes by looking at the QR codes that are on top of them. This uh, to the right is basically just to give you an idea of the working area. So maximum amount of dominoes that you can fit in this working space is 13. As I mentioned before, uh, this uh, interface is a drag and drop. So basically what I am having here is what you will see when you start creating your protocol. So you have a list of consumables. So what you are going to do is you are going to drag and you're going to drop. So you do that for all your consumables. When you decide where you want to pipette, you're going to go from your source, let's say in this case is my diluent, to my destination, in this case is my working place. So it's again a drag and drop, and you're going to indicate uh, where you want to pipette. Uh, once this step happens here, you will get a step. And what is going to happen is um, this window will pop up and you will be able to set up your uh, settings. So you are going to be able to decide your parpeting mode. So, and also you will be able to enter the volume that you want to pipette. So for example, we have also pi uh, pipetting parameters. And so we can define the speed. If we can decide we want to do it normal or slow. We can decide if our samples has high viscosity or they're normal. So we can um, also uh, pick that set. And also by pairing, you can decide you can do forward, reverse, or repetitive mode. And in my case, I always use forward. And there are additional um, settings that you can decide you want to do. If you want to do a air top caution or if you want to do a air bottom caution. Also here, you will be able to pick your tip choice. So in my case, I'm using um, pipette tips that they have filters, so I am checking that box and also um, I'm changing the pipette tips every time. So you can tell the robot if you want to change them or if you want to reuse them, basically not to change the pipette tip. So for tip location, you will have the source and the destination and you can um, definitely decide if you want to change the heights for one of them. So um, this, you decide if you want to adjust it and in some of my applications, I will need to adjust accordingly. And mixing, you can decide if you want to do mixing at your source, which it will be equivalent to pre-wetting or mixing at your destination, which it could be like a mixing equivalent to, for example, to what you get with Vortex, depending on the amount of times that you do your mixing. Also comments, there is room to write comments if you need. Once you run your protocol um, and it's finished, a report is going to be generated and you will have all the information and every single step that you did with the robot. So this is going to be a PDF. And the good thing about this is that you are going to be able to attach this to your electronic laboratory notebook. So let's see the robots that we have in our lab. So this is our high throughput analytic and experimentation team. And here I'm showing you four of our uh, five different legacy Andrew robot models. So we don't have the most updated Android robot right now. What we have is uh, just the legacy. So they're a little bit older models, they work. And when I joined that team, only this 1000 RXL, which is this, and this 10KR, um, they were part of our team. And they were not like being used. So I, you know, look at them and I uh, start looking for applications and that's what I'm going to be talking about. 
Also, I start talking to different groups and some of them were not using these robots. So I inherited uh, from them, uh, which are the 1000R and the 1000D. And also I inherited this 1000P. So let's look at the differences between these models. So this 1000R Excel or 1000R, they are just used as raining um, pipettes. This one, what I like about this robot is uh, it pipettes a maximum of 10 milliliters. Uh, this one is very similar to the 1000R stack that it uses Gelson pipettes. And this 1000P um, uses uh, positive displacement pipettes. So what you see highlighted here is um, the 1000R and the 1000G. And something I want you to capture is very important that you contact Andrew Alliance and work with them and decide which robot is the best for your applications. Like I mentioned, I inherited these two robots from other groups and they are smaller and they did not work for the application I was looking for. They don't, uh, they don't work for, uh, for example, pipetting in HPLC vials. So I worked with them and they were very good and, and we were able to exchange these two models for 1000 R Excel. So my application didn't stop and, and thanks to them, um, we can continue. So the question is why I partner with um, BioFarm and, and, and the team is BioSeparations. And there are many reasons uh, why I did that. So when it comes to the Andrew, uh, it's, it's ideal that, you know, in, in bio separation, they use diluent that is equal, so contains a small amount of organic. Also, their formulation is liquid and it requires a lot of pipetting. So when we look at pipetting, that pipetting techniques influences the results. And we will see some of that in when I present some of my results. Also, um, it re requires a small workflow, so ideal for the, for the robot. And um, for them, it's very important because uh, the platform methods, they monitor excipient stability. And, and right now, they understand that excipient degradation affect the viability of the monoclonal antibody. So what I'm going to be talking about is about two excipient methods. One is Trehalose method, one to four occasions per month and 10 samples per occasion and PSAT method more than two occasions per week and 10 samples per occasion. As every situation, we always have uh, challenges and you know, this was not the section. So um, I have some automation um, development challenges and I received samples for this team and, and they were stability samples and they all came in different size containers. Also, the samples, they have different viscosities and, and dominoes for these legacy Andrew robots are um, now is something that you cannot customize anymore because they are, are concentrated, Andro Alliance is concentrated their efforts in the Andrew Plus. So it's something that I, I cannot request more customized dominoes. Also, the volume of the sample in each container have to be entered in the protocol. So I start thinking that, you know, these challenges were not going to stop my application and I start thinking about possible solutions. So ideally, and it's something that I really want you to think if you're going to be working on a, in automating your methods, is that ideally you want to really standardize the stability size containers uh, for future automation. Of course, you know, in a company as big as GSK, that's going to be difficult. Uh, but it's something just to keep in mind. I can also find dominoes that could work for the sample container, but of course it's going to take me more development time. Or I can request uh, the analyst before starting the automation and, and tell the analyst to basically do a manual transfer some sample container to HPLC vials. In this case, I was using HPLC vials. And I have other options. I can also develop my protocol, have a step, a manual step, uh, where the analyst is going to pipette um, in the HPLC file containing the diluent that was piped by the robot. And once the analysis is done, you know, the protocol continues and, and everything is finished by the robot. That's another option. 
Also, under Alliance offer liquid level one uh, tool that can determine the volume of the sample in each container. And it, this makes the robot more automated. We don't have it at the moment, but it's an option. You know, it costs money, it costs training, but you can also do that. Uh, for my application, we decided to do um, the manual transfer from the sample container to HPLC vials by the analyst. So let's talk about um, the threshold loss method and my collaboration with biofarms. So the method that we automated is content assay for threshold loss in drug substance and drug product using HPLC CAT with CAT. And here you will see uh, the summary of my um, method. So first we have a stock standard solution and this is prepared manually. And after that, the rest is uh, uh, the rest of the preparation is prepared by the robot. So we have calibration standards that um, there are six levels, and also we have sample prep that includes two dilutions, and uh, each sample is very triplicate. And we also have a control prep that is one dilution. Um, so in their case for trehalos, they had two methods at the moment, and I work with both of them. Uh, one was 100% water, and this uh, was this method was under development, and that's how we evaluated the robot. And I also did some testing with 95 water and 5% ACN, which was the original method. Also, I um, ended testing the viscosity, and we found a range of samples that they go from 1 CP to 5 CP. So let me share with you the development strategy for this Trehalos method. So first, um, I tested the robot before talking to my uh, partners in detail and, and creating a plan, uh, that's what I did. So I, I look at the volume dispense accuracy, I adjusted the pipette tip heights, I did um, also a study for pre-wetting versus not pre-wetting, and pre-wetting was better. Uh, for accuracy, and also um, I look at the pipetting speed, and I look at the mixing, like how, ma how many times it was um, necessary to mix. And a lot of the things that, that I did for this automation development, I used co co uh, food coloring. So it was very visual, it was really easy to see if something wasn't working. So it's something that I recommend you, you do automation. Also, I decided to, to run a calibration curve using the Android robot. And I say, if the calibration curve is linear and precise, and if the answer is yes, which it was in this case, I say, we were going to move on and we're going to test the samples and we're going to create a plan. And I also um, determined the sample viscosity. So I got together with my partners and I and we worked together in creating this proof of concept uh, plan. So we decided that we were going to compare the Andrew robot versus the analyst and that we were going to perform the calibration curve in triplicate and the sample we're going to prepare in N equals six and we're going to look at low and high viscosity. Also, we look at the control and we wanted to prepare it in N equals six. Now we also challenged the robot and we say the robot also have to meet the method criteria. So their method criteria is the R square value from the calibration curve must be more than 0.99 and the percentage shares due the concentration of multiple preparation of the samples must be less or equal to 10%. Also, what we did is when we did all of this testing, all the samples prepared by the Android robot and the analyst were tested the same day using the same instrument so that we don't have a, a extra variability. Um, give me one second. So how do we determine uh, which one was the lowest and the high viscosity that we wanted to test? So I use a biofarm C entry first slate and, and they give me 13 samples. I performed that in duplicate and I was able to determine that viscosity ranges from one to a little bit above five. 
So we decided that we were going to go for low viscosity at one and for high viscosity as five. So let me show you here results of our method equivalency um, and talk about linearity and precision. As I mentioned, this was prepared in triplicate, analyst maximum percentage RSD 2.6 and the robot 4.2. And if you look at the R square of the robot, we have a 0.9959, which emits the criteria of this Trehalos method. Let's look now at the results related to the robot and the analyst for the low viscosity samples and high viscosity samples and the control. So looking at the percentage RSD, we get two for the robot and also two for the analyst. And in a similar way for the high viscosity, we get 3.7 for the robot and 3.5 for the analyst. Very similar also for the control and 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 the and, uh, in for the robot and the analyst so three and three point two percentage difference goes from 0.7 to around five. So we can summary that the and robot is linear and is precise and it matches the analyst with a five percent. The team was very, very excited about all of these results and, and they decided that they wanted to move on with the application. Now, this Trehalos method automation proof of concept experiment sample preparation took about two hours using the robot. And this one has hands off. I didn't I did not touch the robot, it did it by itself after you know creating the protocol. And the mixing was also done by the robot by via multiple aspirations and dispenses. In a similar way, um, we're going to look at the uh, PS80 method. So this method is a platform method for the, for the determination of PS80 content by HPLC ELSD. Again, I summarize this. And again, we, the stock standard solution is uh, manual preparation. And now we're looking at a calibration of seven levels and a sample prep that is one dilution in triplicate and a control prep that is one dilution. The diluent is 100% water and the viscosity ranges from one CP to 7.5 CP. Now we have the experience with Trehalos, so we don't have to, we didn't need to start with a new plan. We already knew what we needed to do. So the difference uh, here, I just highlighted with this uh, pink circles and the difference for the automation development is that it took me a little bit more time because this time I was using HPLC vials with insert for the samples. So I needed to spend time adjusting uh, again the height and also the mixing. Um, we, when we got together again with my other partners at, at different um, team of scientists, uh, we decided that we wanted to test uh, low, medium, and high viscosity this time. And we also added one more uh, method criteria. So we say that the mean concentration for the control injections through the run must be within less or equal to 10% PPM of the actual PS80 of the prepared control. And again, since we had experience, we knew that we were going to prepare the Android road and the analyst uh, samples, and they were going to be tested the same day uh, using the same instrument. So I want you to take, a, 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 you know, share with you a closer look of this uh, pipetting technique that we decided for, for PS80. So when we uh, talk, we decided that we were going to pre-wet the tip three times in the source for, for the samples, and that we were going to wash the tip three times in the destination. We also decided that the mixing uh, was going to be vortexing for, uh, the analyst was going to vortex all the samples, and the robot was going to mix all the samples by aspirating and dispensing. 
Now, the preparation, we look at blanks, calibration standards, so again, seven levels, the controls, the samples, low, medium, and high viscosity. And once again, uh, for the robot was hands off liquid dispensing and, and with a total of 48 samples. And manual preparation by the analyst, again, with 48 samples. Now, this picture, I, I really like it because this is how the setup of the robot was for this experiment. So we have the robot working here at the same time the analyst is working. And, and you know, I am looking at the robot and, you know, I'm walking around the lab doing different things and the analyst, she's performing the experiment. So that's the benefits definitely of having automation. So uh, let's look at the results, uh, method equivalency again, and linearity and precision for PS80. Uh, when it comes to the percentage RSD, um, we saw that for the robot, the maximum percentage RSD was 4.3. And, and the maximum percentage RSD uh, for the analyst was 13.2 high for the analyst. And uh, we thought that one of the reasons is the analyst is new to the team. She's getting familiar with this method, um, which, you know, is okay. Uh, we decided that we wanted the robot to meet that criteria. And the R square, you see, is 0.999, excellent for, for the robot. So it meets um, the specification of the method. We can look in more detail really quickly um, the seven levels of the calibration curve. And we see how the robot uh, is performing. And when it comes to the percentage RSD, really, really good and also uh, the different uh, concentrations of the uh, standard and, you know, next to the analyst. So, yeah, we see definitely more variability for the analyst and, and, and you know, another good reason why it's good to automate our methods. Samples and control, we have then N equals six. And again, low, medium, and high viscosities, uh, samples and controls I want to share. And let's look at the percentage RSD. So we're looking at 2.5, 1.1, 0.6, and 2.7. And, and very similar, a little, definitely the robot did better for the high viscosity sample. And when I do the high viscosity, the robot is pipetting very, very slow. So that's something that I, I can specify in my um, pipetting parameters. So summary of proof of concept for this experiment is again, overall for both of the methods, we prove that the Android robot is linear and is precise. Also emits stress halos and PS specifications. Like I, I mentioned, we look at the R square we look at the percentage RSD or multiple preparations. We also look at the control um, for PS80 and everything, uh, the robot met all the specifications. I also want to add uh, other application and this application is going to be in the small molecule space. And as I showed you in the beginning, we have this um, menu uh, that we offer to our clients uh, for the work packages. And this uh, application that I'm going to show you where I use the Android robot is exhibiting effects and formulation development. So as I mentioned before, a lot we do solubility screening study. And what happened here in this uh, study is I created a new automation workflow for high throughput analytical experimentation, which is our team. And what I did, I just optimized the pipetting dispenses at 3.5 milliliters, so diluent into four milliliter vials for 24 samples in 10 minutes. And I cannot pipette faster. And transfer 24 samples from the vials into a filter plate in 30 minutes. All of these happens hands-off liquid dispensing and accomplished uh, with the robot. 
Now, summarizing this, the first part of the study, we're looking at 18 polymers, six time points, N equal four. So a total of 432 experiments in which the robot was used. And for a study part two, which our partner came back and they were happy with the results and, and they wanted to continue their study, they did six polymers, control three conditions, six time points, N equal four, and a total of 400 experiments. And again, we use this with uh, dispensing the liquid with the Andrew robot. So uh, we ended uh, giving then uh, 872 total solubility points. So this is a summary and to give, to give you a better idea of this experiment design. So for a study one, um, we have three plates. So these are four milliliter vials and we dispense at 3.5 milliliters. So I use a 1000 R Excel and the robot model to do that. So each plate took around 10 minutes to do the pipetting. And after that, once, um, you know, that time point needed to be collected. So each of these plates is a different time point. So what happened is at each time point, uh, we transfer sample from plate one to the filter plate. And this block here, which is in red, took around 30 minutes and another 30 minutes and another 30 minutes. So it takes time. It's probably not a faster way because it's just piping one sample at a time. But like I say, it's hands off. So during that time, I was able to set up my instrument and I was able to do um, other, other things while the robot was working. And I trust the robot um, that I can walk away. So like I mentioned, it's our place is sampled by the robot and uh, what is filtered in a 96 well format for all six time points. And this, just to remind you, is an, um, we're looking at 432 analytical data points. So why automation? And I think after you know going through all of this, you can see advantages. So we're looking at experiment time that can be reduced and sometimes the answer is yes, and sometimes the answer is no. But even if the time is the same as the analyst, just think that your analyst can be writing the experiment, the analyst can be setting up uh, the instrument, or the analyst can be working in more science. It improves efficiency for the same reason I was telling you, and also it decreases analyst to analyst variability. So just think about it, like how we define the pipetting parameters. So maybe one analyst won't pre-wet the tip, but another one will. And that will definitely influence the, um, the results. Also, we have this, re uh, also we were looking at uh, reduced pipetting, repetitive pipetting for the scientists. And this is very interesting because every time that we did the evaluation, uh, we, each of the analysts, they told me my, you know, my hand is hurting or pipetting. I, you know, I'm tired, my back hurts. So definitely this is going to be helpful for your analysts. And uh, it can also avoid analyst errors when you have so many samples and, and, and you are pipetting and someone distracts you, you might make a mistake. So that's something that really happens. And for all of the reasons, you can have a sample preparation that is definitely more robust. Now, if we look at the Android robot, it's flexible. So you can basically set up your, let's say, PSAT method in, in the morning and run your samples, and you can rearrange your dominoes and run your um, trehalose method in the afternoon. So that's something that is definitely uh, an advantage. So what is next uh, for all of this uh, implementation. As I mentioned, we exchanged the 1000G and the 1000R models for 1000R Excel. Right now, the robots are being validated and they're going to be implemented for the bio separations team. The robots will be deployed to do different locations and groups. And also, um, when it comes to Trehalos method, 
we were in the implementation stage before COVID happened and we were providing them calibration standards. So for the analysts, they don't need to prepare the standards. The analysts will just grab the standards and, and prepare samples. Um, you know, with COVID, uh, that is a uh, stop. But right now, since we're going to be sending the robots out, so the protocol will be transferred to this team. And in a similar uh, fashion, um, PSAT method, um, we will do the same. So we finish this Android robot and analyst comparison at the end of the year. We are also going to transfer the um, protocols to the team. One thing I really want to do, and I, right now we have limitations of who we can have on site, uh, but I really want to do a on site demonstration of the Android Plus, and I want to test Halos and PSAT uh, protocols. And I think this will be definitely an improvement in, in the time that it takes to do the pipetting uh, since the Android Plus uh, uses electronic pipettes. So that's something I'm looking forward to do. I want to acknowledge um, my partners, Katie, Michelle, Justin, Katie, Dow, Matt, Ken, David, and Alicia. They're from different teams, bioseparations, method innovation, analytical automation uh, formulations. And um, to my right, you will see, or on your right, uh, you will see the high throughput automation team, UK and US. And in these bowls, you will see that we all have different expertises. And this is <clears throat> such a good thing for our team because we are able to, um, you know, have all of that work packages and, and offer um, a lot of benefits to the different teams when they come to us. Also, <clears throat> To finalize, I, I want to ask you two questions. Not that you have to answer them to me, but I want you to, you know, think about it. How would you like to implement automation from day to day use? And also what methods would you like to automate? Start thinking how you can do this for your team and what kind of uh, platform or robot uh, it will be good uh, for your applications. Um, I open for questions and thank you for taking your time and also um, joining today. Thank you so much, Sharon. Fabulous. Um, thank if you, you can move to the next slide. Um, do you share the instructions? I just want to allow people to make sure that they understand how to ask the questions. So if you find your chat button, please select to all panelists. Um, and then we can read the questions to Sharon. Thank you. Excellent presentation, Sharon. Thank you kindly. Thank uh, you. We do have a couple of questions. So one was um, asked around the time savings, if there is any between, say, the Trehelos proof of concept, where you said it took two hours with a robot. Do you have any um, insights on how long it took the analyst to do the same activity? Uh, it's interesting because I, I was there when the analyst was performing the experiment. So it's hard to tell because it's interesting when you are performing as an analyst, you get interrupted. So it's, it's very difficult to tell you the real time it took the afternoon. So I would say several hours more than the robot because, you know, people came and asked the analyst questions and, and, and she stopped you know, and, and after that continue. So yeah, I don't have a specific time, but I would say longer than the robot. Excellent. And obviously you pointed out the ergonomic benefits um, and freeing up the analysts to do other activities. Yes, exactly. And, and you know, they see that uh, that benefit when, uh, for example, in, in PSAT uh, method and, and the analyst is seeing the robot working and she's you know, close to the robot, she's like, oh my God, I have to do this, right? And when it can be done by the robot. Uh, can you comment about the uh, robot reproducibility from day to day? Mm, we haven't done any testing from day to day specifically. Um, I will say is, you know, based on everything, the results that we see is, is going to be reproducible. Excellent. 
Um, can you comment about method development and how long does it take to develop a method and would you do it maybe by hand first and then, the, then on the Andrew or would you do them at the same time? So the methods that were already set up, um, so these methods have been used uh, by the analysts for a long time. Um, now the automation development, this is where our team is important because what we do is we have the expertise and we spend the time uh, performing the automation development. So that was my, my job. So I work several, I would say in, in, for the first method, Trejalos, because it was my first experience. So I, I worked several uh, months on, you know, testing uh, the heights and understanding and, and I have issues with the robot and I needed to send the robot to under alliance and the robot needed to get fixed. Um, so that took several months. Uh, but once we, you know, we went through all of that process, uh, automating the second um, PS80, for example, PS80 method took like less than half of the time because we already have the experience right in the beginning you are trying to understand how the robot works what the robot can do uh, but once you figure that out and you know what you need and you have your plan the second time is a lot faster so uh, it's, it's something that now if we have another method it will be probably even faster so right now we are in the implementation uh, stage, which we are um, one of the analysts is writing the steps to how to use the Andrew. So I have been training her, her, uh, her and also we have been exchanging a lot of information and we also are looking at the qualification of the robot. So once we figure that out, doing it for the second is just going to, you have your template and you just do your modifications. Excellent. It's going to be a, ch a shorter period of time for, you know, that methods that will be coming up. We have another question uh, for the robot versus the analyst comparison in the Trejalos method. What is the source of systematic difference between the robot and the analyst? And is it uh, in any way related to the robot pipettes uh, or is it because the robot and the analyst are using different sets of pipettes? Uh, you mean for the systematic error? I guess it is, yes. Yeah, I think, like I say in the beginning, um, we're looking at first experience. So we were not as thrilled defining the pipetting uh, technique. So I believe the analyst did not do the pre wetting for example. But um, you know, based on that experience is when we decided, okay, we have to eliminate, you know, these errors and we really need to define and, and reduce that variability. So that's why for PSA, you will see that um, we really define how things were going to happen. Also uh, for Trejalos, the analyst mix, instead of using Vortex, the analyst mix uh, by uh, aspirating and dispensing by hand. So there was a difference between Trejalos and also PSAT. So with PSAT, we say, I don't think there is a need. I think we can accomplish it with the robot, the same as Vortex. So uh, that also, you know, help it um, uh, for the automation development and also the results. Excellent. So I have another question uh, regarding, say, uh, viscosity, or it's it's a little off topic. Um, have you ever performed slurry dosing with the Andrew? No. Okay. Not at the moment. Let, let me see. No, not at the moment. Uh -huh. Okay. And regarding the different modules um, that were available for, um, say, the legacy um, Andrew, so you said the custom dominoes are no longer available. Is there an opportunity for you to train um, a custom position uh, or would it require a, a custom domino from um, from the vendor? Uh, I mean, like the custom dominoes, it will be nice because I will have my containers and I can just say this is a, this ones are the containers that we received from, you know, the our partner and and we can say, can you create a domino that fit these containers. 
uh, in this case, uh, they are unable to create this uh, specific dominoes. Um, so if I want to, let's say, automate everything where Dana has just put like the container in a domino, um, I will need to find like dominoes that might have a similar shape to that container. So, and 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 I think in that case, it just will be like a, a lot of it, time spending and trying to understand, um, you know, how that works. So it will be ideal uh, in this case to have the Android Plus because you can do that customization. Excellent. Seems like we have a comment regarding that for legacy uh, Andrew custom domino development is not available, but it is available for the Andrew plus. Yeah, that's correct. Uh -huh. uh, excellent. Uh -huh. with, with 3D printing these days, I was wondering if there's an opportunity to print up a, a, a custom um, domino and if that would work by training the position or not, but that was a little off topic. Uh, yeah, no, it's, it's, it's also something I have the same question for Andrew Alliance. The problem is that they they are the ones that train the robot. So the only thing I can do is adjustments of the heights. And they also create QR codes um, for that, for the robot to recognize it. So let's say I do 3D printing, I won't have the QR code. So the Andrew won't be able to recognize that domino. In the comments also, it seems to be um, that it's a commoditized process. So it's not very expensive for them to pr perform that. Uh, um request for people so it's not uh, very expensive yeah exactly they will have a development fee and after that you can buy your domino as many times as you need that's excellent that is. it's available but uh, right now it's available for android plus if you want to customize Uh, and the last question I have about um, setting up the Andrew for the beginning of the day. So how long would it take you to set the Andrew up to run a protocol before you actually hit the run button? Five minutes. Wow. Really quickly. I will say maximum 10 because maybe I need to look for the <laughs> domino. But um, it's very quickly. It's, it doesn't take long at all. Uh, is something that, and even the Andrew uh, will tell you, that robot will tell you where you have to locate the dominoes. And of course, you who know, created the protocol, you know which dominoes you're going to be using. So you probably have them handy. Um, you may have that set up already, you know, ready, uh, that the dominoes in the location where the robot is asking you to place them. So it's, it's very quickly, it doesn't take long. Um, and after that, the robot will, you know, look at the dominoes, try to locate them, look, check that you place them in the right location. So um, that takes, a, you know, another couple of minutes, five minutes for the robot. And after that, everything will start, but it's, it's quick. And there seems to be a comment regarding the Andrew itself from um, probably the vendor and the range of labware that can be included uh, is a broad collection of tubes, plates, chips, bottles, et cetera. So there's a, a wide yeah, selection of dominoes. Exactly, exactly. And even, even for the legacy, they have a um, variety of consumables. And, and of course, if I need something, I can go in that list and I can look and I can pick and I can request it and I have done it. Um, so yeah, Tom is our representative, um, and, and we work together and, and we see, you know, what we need and, and he will, um, place the order for, you know, work with I us. I think, I think that's all for questions today. Okay. So, so I can, uh, sum up here. Uh, thank you all for joining us today and, uh, we'd like to thank you and Appreciate Sharon's excellent presentation, so I'll thank her. Uh, the recording of this presentation and our previous presentations are on YouTube channel. The best way to get to the LRIG YouTube channel is just go to LRIG.org, and on the front page, you'll see a big listing where the link is. And so uh, feel free to go and view past ones and review this presentation. Uh, we will. Our, our presentations for February and March, the registration links are not active yet, and I will send everyone who registered for this meeting a notification 
uh, when that's available and when the current presentation is up and available for viewing. Thank you all again and have a nice day. Thank you. You want to say? <laughs> You're welcome. Bye-bye.